Hey guys, welcome back again for another episode of The Suited Shootist, and uh, this week we are going to continue the, the pocket series a little bit, and um, we're getting into some very niche application stuff, because the pocket knives that I'm going to be talking about today, honestly, don't make it into the rotation that much. However, there are circumstances where either... Um, I am unable to carry a firearm and I want a, you know, still want a capable deadly force option with me uh, in the, <clears throat> you know, the instances of I'm going to, uh, you know, a, a bar or someplace where it's literally a felony to get caught carrying a gun. Or if there are just those very kind of low risk social situations where the fallout of having a gun discovered is just so socially catastrophic that the juice really ain't worth the squeeze. But again, in the same vein, um, I still might want something a little bit more capable than just the, the sap, which honestly is still my preferred go-to. Um, but I feel like these still have a role. And so I'm not necessarily saying that they're the best option for you, um, like I said, they're not really the best option for me anymore, but it's something that I still find useful enough that, uh, that it's worth talking about. So everything that we're looking at is going to be mounted on a Raven pocket shield, just because from what I've found, that is still the best way to carry tools in your pocket because it's consistently indexed and um, it also just allows for consistent access and deployment because if you've just got something floating around in a pocket then it can be kind of tricky. The pocket shields also work great if you're just trying to make everything else lower profile. So if you carry a folding knife or a flashlight or pepper spray or all of the above and you don't want the tell of those clips hanging out of your pockets then the shields are a great option. So what we're looking at is, in the event that uh, I'm just not carrying a gun for whatever reason, the other thing that I like about something like this is I can have my hand on the tool without really being in, a, in as overt or aggressive of a posture as reaching for something on my waistband. There's no socially acceptable reason to be doing this, but this is completely normal. So what I've got on me right now are two options. Uh, the first is going to be this little micro guppy from Blade Rigs. And um, honestly, I kind of picked this up on a, on a whim, but I do like the fact that it comes with a factory trainer as well. It's double-edged, so and, and it's a fixed blade, so there's going to be some varying legalities to it. But the overall length is still fairly unobtrusive, and the grip is such that it does fit the hand a couple of different ways. Um, so, as kind of the, the space maker tool, if I can get this out and get it indexed on a hip, uh, kind of a la the Chris Fry method then that allows me to do the eye jabs or kind of go to the to the fork or the face, which are his preferred uh, target areas. So the way that I've got it actually set up is the sheath is just DCC clipped and lashed to the, uh, to the pocket shield, and the whole thing just rides in my right hip pocket. Um, the thing I'm not super wild about, just because I haven't played with the retention of this sheath specifically, but if I try and come straight out, the shield wants to come with it. Um, so, the draw stroke required for this to be successful has my arm coming back. Now, that's not an ideal angle because that opens me up for um, underhooks as well as if I'm pinned up against a wall or something, I don't necessarily have that range of movement. But again, circumstance is going to dictate. Uh, so 
that's something to factor in. So this doesn't really get a whole lot of road time anymore, but I'm not really saying that this is a solution for anybody. I'm just using it as an example of how this kind of thing can be set up. Um, the way I've got it on the pocket shield, the grip of the knife rides above the top edge so that I'm able to get enough of uh, a grip on it, either with my ring finger or with my index finger, so that it's still a fairly natural hand posture. And then, well, see, again, you have to be very specific with it in order for it to come out all the time. I really should spend a little bit more time um, playing around with this to, to, to get it dialed in. So that's option one. Um, if I'm doing something else in a right hip pocket, the other one that I like is I've got a uh, G10 Dart from Zulu Nylon Gear. <clears throat> and the nice thing about it is the clip that, uh, I've, that it came with. Now, full disclosure, this is not a clip that Matt uses on it anymore. Um, he's found a more robust method for attachment and that particular clip has been discontinued. But um, I still have a few spares laying around, so I'm not overly concerned about it. Because it's a G10 knife, Kydex sheath, plastic clip, um, it's, there's, no, there's no metal signature to it at all. And the nice thing about the clip configuration is if I've got just a spare pocket shield, I can literally clip it to it, and the tooth catches in one of these notches nicely enough that um, it really doesn't need any further attachment onto the pocket shield. And so it just pops out and I've got my little pokey. The other one that does tend to get a little bit more mileage <clears throat> uh, at this point is going to be my Shivworks push dagger. Now again, I am in a state where this is legal to carry. So check your local laws, your mileage may vary. But <clears throat> the reason why I like this one is because I can have it set up on my weak side and even with the minimal amount of uh, striking experience that I've got, this is going to allow me a little bit more oomph and, and make that make strikes from my support side, my weak side, a whole lot more impactful than they would otherwise be. Um, Craig has talked in depth about the design of this knife, so I'm really not going to touch on that, and I'm not really a blade expert anyways. But I do like the ability of something like this to ride support side, um, again, especially in those more casual social settings, because I can have pepper spray, and for whatever reason, if that's not compelling enough, I'm able to bring this out without having to you know, shift hands and, and change that kind of thing. This is a very gross motor skill kind of, uh, you know, kind of tool. So both of these knives do come with factory trainers. And if you are going to regularly carry a knife, um, I do recommend having a factory trainer for it. Now, uh, again, especially with the guys that teach the force on force stuff, um, they will go into detail about it. But a factory trainer that is made of metal is not designed for hard application because even if this entire thing is blunt and rounded, you can still jack somebody up with it if it's applied too aggressively. So uh, that's where foam trainers like the knock knife come into play. Um, I don't know if they have one offered for the uh, for the uh, the push dagger, but I do know they make it for the clinch pick and making something that is analogous to that for the uh, for the little micro guppy here is not hard. Um, I've got some, basically, uh, in the, the home gym that we have, the, the foam interlocking mat material that they sell at like Academy, the edge pieces are small enough that you can kind of trim them down and with that foam, wrap in a couple layers of duct tape and you can make something that you can jab somebody fairly hard with and it will not uh, have any ill effect. So if you're looking for kind of a DIY solution, that would definitely be a, um, an option to look at. So these are just a, a couple of the, the pocket shield knives that I have set up. Like I said, it's not a, uh, a real common companion for me anymore, but just kind of to serve as a primer of, hey, 
if you do carry a knife or if you're trying to figure out how to carry a knife more discreetly, these would certainly be uh, a couple of, of options to explore and a couple places to start. But just again, keep in mind that you're going to have to figure out how to make everything work. Because like for the push dagger, I had to cut away part of the pocket shield in order to get the grip that I really needed. And I'm probably going to need to take a Dremel to this sheath because sometimes I do have a hard time overcoming the, the retention of it. It's a little too stout. So um, those are all things that you have to practice if you're planning on carrying this intentionally and for any serious use. So like I said, this is just kind of uh, a little food for thought. I know that uh, you know knives are a big part of a lot of people's carry. And again, when you're talking about um, slightly more elevated wardrobe, having a knife clip hanging out of your pocket is not necessarily the, uh, the most appropriate or the most socially fluent thing to do, depending on your environment. So I'm always about making sure that you have the options to avoid any unnecessary scrutiny. So hope you found this useful. I'll catch everybody next week and uh, stay sharp.